Yo, this is Lex, and this is a Diablo 3 build guide for solo pushing high level greater rifts with Legacy of Nightmares Archon Star Pact. This build is also known as LON32 or Bazooka. Before I begin, this is an advanced build. It is very hard to gear for and requires precise timing. I recommend beginning with a starter build like Frozen Orb, Meteor Shower, or Chantoto. Wait until you have all the gear and at least 1500 Paragon before attempting this build. Let's continue the video for those who are still interested. The gear revolves around the Legacy of Nightmares 2 piece set consisting of Litany of the Undaunted and the Wailing Host. Season 17 is the Season of Nightmares, so we get this set buff without needing to wear these rings. We gain Convention of Elements for extra damage and Unity for extra toughness. In order for Unity to work, your follower has to also be wearing Unity along with the relic that prevents them from dying. Since this is a Legacy of Nightmares build, all 13 pieces of gear should be ancient. Death Wish, Et Sigil, and Mantle of Channeling all increase damage while channeling. The Swami Helm allows overlapping Archon stacks, and Fasula's Improbable Chain provides extra stacks. Aquila Chest provides more toughness when we aren't dumping resource. Ancient Parthion Defenders works with Freezing to keep us alive. Swampland Raiders are a Witch Doctor item, but can have 20% more Arcane damage. The Illusory Boots keep us from getting stuck. The best amulet to use is Hellfire, but it can be hard to craft a good one. I'm using the Flavor of Time for extra vitality. Another option is the Moonlight Ward for 5% extra arcane damage. You might have to use another amulet if it has better stats. St. Archer's Gauge is recommended, but you should use the gloves with the best stats. Moving on to the cube, we have the Grand Vizier and Nilfo's Boost for more meteor damage, and the Halo of Alice for keep enemies frozen. The gems used are Gogok of Swiftness, Bane of the Stricken, and Bane of the Trapped. You can switch Bane of the Trapped out for Esoteric, but during Season 17, the Unity Ring should be enough toughness. For stat priorities, I recommend cooldown reduction everywhere for a total of 65% before the Swiftness gem is active. You can get away without 8% cooldown reduction on the amulet, but it's better to have extra time. Crit chance, crit damage, area damage, arcane damage, and meteor damage are all priorities. Attack speed is not needed. On the Paragon page, max out arcane power and movement speed. Put enough Paragon points into Vitality for around 800,000 to 1 million health points. Moving on to skills, Ice Armor Crystallized works with Halo of Alice. Ray of Frost Sleet Storm is channeled for extra damage. Spectral Blade with Throne Blade Rune is the best for generating resource. Star Pact for big dumps. Both Wave of Force Arcane Attunement and Archon Pure Power stack more damage. Arcane Dynamo and Audacity also provide more damage. A Lifesaver cause dying sucks. And Evocation for max cooldown reduction. Let's practice the Star Pact timing in town. After casting Stop Act, it takes 1.25 seconds for the Meteor to hit the ground. During this time, you will need to cast Spectral Blade once, followed by one tap of Ray of Frost. Practice doing this rotation of Stop Act, Spectral Blade, and Ray of Frost, making sure the Ray of Frost is started before the Meteor lands. Once you got this down, you can add in the Archon Pop right away after Ray of Frost. You can confirm Ray of Frost worked by the auto-casted Wave of Force or Meteor. Let's just jump into a level 135 Greater Rift. Make sure you cast Ice Armor when you enter. The first Archon is popped at the beginning of Convention of Elements Lightning Phase. You have 20 seconds of Archon to gather enemies. Let's break down the Arcane Phase Meteor. This Meteor is the main source of damage. Start by hitting as many enemies as possible with Wave of Force. Cast Spectral Blade until you have 5 stacks of Arcane Dynamo. Meteor can be casted after 3 seconds of Lightning Phase has passed. I've casted Meteor right before Lightning Phase has ended. This is followed up by Spectral Blade, which you can see has been casted here. Ray of Frost is active here. Archon is popped right after Ray of Frost begins and before the Meteor has hit the ground. You have 20 seconds to drag and gather more enemies. Once you have gotten the Arcane Phase Meteor down, you can start using the Fire Phase Meteor. This meteor is casted halfway through the fire phase, in order to activate an oculus ring equipped on the follower. Try not to kill too many enemies with this meteor. Here you can see some fancy stutter stepping to get into this ring, while landing the arcane phase meteor. 
And there you have the full rotation. Obviously this is not easy to pull off. It would take practice and dedication, but when done correctly, it is extremely satisfying and rewarding. Sometimes the fire phase meteor is enough to finish off an elite.
This is a bad map with dangerous enemies, but we can't give up now. Want to need conduit for the win. Speed pylon can help us get out of this mess. We are back on a good map, but watch out for the licks. Range elites like this archer can be difficult to drag. When dragging, move until your follower teleports to you. Rift Guardians are difficult with this build. Our best matchups are Saxtris, Binder, and Hamlin for their adds. Crusader King has some adds, but it can be difficult to survive the Archers. Bane of the Stricken is stacked faster with Archon's melee attack. Channeling pylon won't be useful here.
Spectral Blade is used to stack Bane at the Stricken while outside Archon. His free swing combo hits hard and he can't be frozen. The projectile spread will hurt more when close to him. This will be the last meteor. There is no time left for another. I hope you enjoy the build. Like the video if this helped you. Subscribe for more content. And feel free to stop by the live stream to say hi. Happy slaying.